Oh my goodness, it might be time for another haircut. I wonder if my barber can do something about this gray down here. Oh, didn't see you standing there. Welcome back. The topic of this month's assignment is reflections, and we're gonna have a lot of fun giving you some ideas today, so let's jump into it. Reflections have always been a huge source of creative inspiration for photographers, and they give us all kinds of ways to get creative and spice up our compositions. Besides that, they're just a great way to train your creative instincts and your ability to see different possibilities, even when the surroundings are a little bit dull. Of course, reflections pop up while doing all kinds of different shots from landscapes and cityscapes to street photography and portraits, you name it. The sky's the limit and you can really work reflections into whatever kind of photography you feel like doing. Hey, if you're not already a member of our online photography school, then you're missing out. This video is actually just a part of one of our monthly lessons that we assign to our awesome members over at viewfindermastery.com. So come and try it out. It's a lot of fun. We have a great library of courses on all kinds of photography topics from portrait and sports photography to landscape and Lightroom, you name it. The best part is that you can upload your shots for feedback and join our ongoing photography conversation. It's interactive, it's fun, and your photography is going to improve faster than you can imagine. So come and check us out at viewfindermastery.com. Okay, let's get back into the video. Well, I would love to be up at some gorgeous mountain lake today, uh, shooting landscapes with beautiful, calm reflections in the foreground. And that's usually where my mind goes when I think about reflections photography. But here we are in this much more urban environment and we're gonna have to work for it a little bit harder. And I think that's actually the point of this exercise is to challenge ourselves to see the possibilities in a place where it's maybe not so obvious. So yeah, we've got cars, we've got buildings, we've got water, plenty to work with. And now we just need to warm up and take a few shots. Okay, so this is obviously a lesson about finding reflections and using them creatively, not avoiding reflections in photography, which could be a topic for um, another great lesson. But when we're looking for reflections, of course, we're looking for anything that's smooth and uh, has that reflective quality. So this car is a perfect example. And I see a cool reflection actually from this brick building uh, right into the, the top of this car here. It's got kind of a weird abstract look. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of this. And what I've noticed is that when I actually get my camera in very close to this foreground, it actually helps clean up the composition and make for a little bit of a better, stronger reflection shot. So I'm just gonna get in here and take a couple pictures to warm things up. Okay, we are in an absolutely awesome spot for reflection photography. I've got this nice big window behind me, which is just like a perfect mirror of this scene. And I noticed that the closer I bring my camera to the window, the more symmetrical the picture gets. I end up with like, a, it's like a perfect mirror shot. One thing that makes it particularly good is that this meeting room on the other side of this window is not being used right now. <laughs> Otherwise it would be a little awkward number one, but number two, it's dark. So it's actually providing a really, really strong reflection. And now I just need kind of a subject, a person to walk through and kind of bring a little bit of life into this picture. 
So I've got my settings all figured out. Everything's set, I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting for that unwitting subject to walk in and complete the scene. So let's see what we get. That looks cool. talk settings. I'm using my 24 to 105 millimeter zoom lens today. Lots of flexibility in there. It lets me try a lot of different shots. It opens up to a maximum f4 aperture, which outdoors is plenty bright, especially on a day like today. Um, I've got the camera in aperture priority mode, which allows me to focus on choosing an aperture setting and the camera's taking care of the other stuff for me. So automatic ISO, automatic white balance, single autofocus, no tracking at the moment at least, and I'm just taking one picture at a time, no rapid sequences. But that's just gonna be a baseline. That's how I have the camera set up right now. We'll just have to see what we find for subjects and adjust as needed. We found R2-D2, a little sculpture, and We've got a fun reflection in the background behind them. The nice big uh, church towers. And actually, it's a perfect reminder of the depth of field problem that we have in reflection photography because you would think that the whole scene exists on one plane, um, that we focus on the subject behind the glass and that the reflection is sort of the same distance as the, the main subject is, but actually it's not the case. The church, is actually as far away from my subject as it would be in reality. If I just pointed my camera at the scene normally and I had this subject R2-D2 close by and I had my church in the background, I would have to use a relatively small aperture to get sharpness throughout the whole scene. It's the same thing when we're dealing with reflections. The robot's close to the camera. The reflected image of the church is actually just as far away as it would be from the reflection itself. So it's gonna take something like F11 or F14 to have both the foreground subject and the background church you know, relatively sharp in the picture. So this is something to play around with on your own. You know, It's not to say that you have to photograph with a small aperture when you're, when you're shooting reflections. Just be aware that the same depth of field problem exists uh, like you would normally have in a, in a deep scene like that. So yeah, I'm gonna try shooting it with a couple different apertures just to play around. Okay, so for this first shot, I'm actually gonna focus right on the robot and open the aperture all the way up to f2.8. And we can see that the church towers in the background are not uh, very sharp in relation to the foreground subject. And the second shot here, what I've done is just kept the settings the same and pushed my focus back to the reflection and focus on the church towers. And you can see that the robot in the foreground is not as sharp as it was before. And in this third shot, I've adjusted the aperture down to f11, and we can see that both the robot and the reflection of the church in the background are both about the same level of sharpness. So actually, one thing that I could use here that might help my shot out would be a polarizing filter. And I know that polarizing filters are usually thought of as something that you use to reduce reflections or eliminate them completely. But actually, what they can do is they can give you just a little bit more control over how much reflection you have in your shot. And if I could just reduce this reflection a little bit so that I could see through the window more, I'd be able to get more out of the robot and also probably have enough reflection from the church back here. So think about that when you're out. If you've got a polarizing filter, take it with you. You might be able to actually control the level of reflection in your shot um, rather than just have to take whatever's there. So normally this time of year, we would have some wet weather and we might be able to work with some puddles on the streets. Could be some fun reflection shots. We don't have that today. It's actually, it's a really dry day. And um, so what I've done is I've brought my puddle along with me. And I'm gonna flood the foreground here in a second and try to get a cool reflection shot of this great big classic church in the background. To try to make the most out of that reflection and 
Rather than focusing on my foreground, I'm gonna actually move the focus out to the background to really uh, emphasize the church. So yeah, going for that low camera angle. I've put on my wide angle 16 to 35 for this shot. Um, the 24 to 105 just wasn't quite wide enough. So get down real low, focus on the church, and take a couple shots. Even better when some people walk through or ride their bikes through the scene. For this to work out and not look too phony, I've got to get the camera down really, really low. Otherwise, I can see too much of my middle ground, which is nice and dry, of course, and that makes the whole thing look a little bit uh, contrived. So I'm, I can't get my camera too much lower than it is right now. Just trying to really eliminate as much middle ground as I can. But you can imagine that this kind of shot would be really a lot of fun late in the evening as the sky starts to turn kind of blue and maybe some of these street lamps come on. It could be kind of a reflective blue hour shot and I'm sure it would have a lot of atmosphere. So possibilities are endless. Here. Okay, now I'm gonna show you all of the pictures from our fun shoot here in just one second. But before I do, let me tell you about the fantastic courses that we run over at viewfindermastery.com. If you wanna learn photography in a clear and structured way from professional photography educators, then come and check us out at viewfindermastery.com. We've got courses in all kinds of photography topics from portraiture and sports photography to landscape and Lightroom, you name it. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. We've got great customer ratings, so just check us out on Google and Facebook to hear what others are saying first. And then I would love to see you join us over at viewfindermastery.com. Okay, I hope you enjoy these pictures. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Please give us a like and share this video with your photography friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Enjoy these pictures and I will see you in the next video.